Hey everyone, uh, it's me again. So hopefully, um, as you read in my agenda post, uh, we are to going to start a new topic, a new unit today. It is the last unit of the year, um, and it's a very important one for those of you who plan on taking pre-calc next year. Um, it's actually going to be a lot of the stuff that we're going to cover is going to be assumed. I know that you know with this coronavirus, you know, hopefully people will know that. The end of the year was rough, and you might not have you might have missed things. You might not have learned everything that you needed to. But normally, this unit is considered kind of like prerequisite knowledge. So I'm going to try to give you the best that I can, the best um, overview of the subject uh, in the next six, six weeks that we have for school left. Um, just to let you all know, I hope that you are still being safe and uh, happy at home. I hope that you got out yesterday because it's, it was a beautiful day. Um, I myself, I'm recording this at night, but uh, I got out, you know, had a nice picnic, had cooked, grilled some burgers, played some soccer with my kids, uh, and I hope that you're all doing well too. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Well, we're gonna introduce we're going to have an introduction to ge trigonometry on the unit circle. Um, maybe you might, rem might remember some things about trigonometry from geometry class, uh, excuse me, last year. And trigonometry, you know, it's, it's a very important uh, subject that I always think of as kind of combining elements of geometry on the one hand um, and shapes and uh, things like that with algebra on the other hand it's kind of like a marriage between the two um, and so you can probably think of from the word trig or try um, it uses a lot of triangles it's a kind of triangle based geometry so that's what let's get into this lesson right now i'm going to hit go and hopefully load the lesson so as usual, I'm just going to ask, you know, share something interesting that you did or something that happened to you this week. You know, let me know. I'm trying to keep in touch with you, making these videos. I know it's difficult, you know, being one way kind of communication. Please send me something back. I, this, this is kind of the reason, whole reason I do this is to get a little bit of back and forth with you guys. Um, so, yes, share with me something with me that you did. Let's see, what did I do this week that was interesting or something that I was like happy about um, you know what I actually went for a walk this week um, at the beach so I'm gonna kind of draw my little uh, it's gonna be a terrible drawing some of you are much better at this and, and I love seeing your drawings um, I'm gonna draw a little bit. This is this is sand. I know you probably can't tell. You're like, Mr. Doobie, really? That's sand. Um, but I went down to Ham and Asset with my uh, son and, and a stroller pushing him along. We got to see the ocean. Well, not the ocean, but you know what I mean, like the the waves, the um, the water down by. I think it's technically like Long Island Sound, right? And it's close enough. It it, it, it connects to the ocean. Um, and we took a nice nice walk kind of down this paved path that is uh that is down by Ham and Acid. So that's my terrible picture, and I will just uh, say that I uh, I took a long walk on the beach. I hope that you all did something too. Okay. Um, so now in this next part, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of a hook for what's interesting about trigonometry. Like why, why do we even care? Um, so that I don't have to deal with YouTube copyright issues when I upload this video. I'll have you, I'm not going to click on this, but I want you to answer, think about this question. Have you ever wondered what sound looks like? Um, I know that we can perceive sound. 
through our ears, using our ears. Um, and, or you might even sometimes feel it in your chest if it's kind of like a really loud, you know, you're at a concert or something like that. Um, but what does sound look like? Um, and it, so if you watch this video, you'll see a performance um, using a bunch of different, really interesting science experiments that visualize music. Um, so why don't you go ahead, I will pause the video, go ahead and watch the video on your own, and then answer this question. What are your thoughts about this performance? What sort of patterns do you notice about the way the sound appears, the sounds appear? Go ahead and answer and watch the video on your own. It's pretty cool. Uh, definitely meme worthy at least. And then answer that question. Okay, so hopefully you've come back. Uh, you've watched the video. You, you've written some of your own thoughts about it. I will tell you my thoughts. Uh, I thought it was pretty metal. I mean, I know technically it's not metal music, but it was... It was crazy to me. Um, and what kind of patterns did uh, did you notice? Um, I noticed that um, all of the sounds, all of the visuals of the music visualizations um, were um, were patterns, right? Were patterns. Um, and, and more importantly, they were kind of repeating patterns, right? So um, whether you saw the the, the sand, uh, I think it was actually technically salt on the dish, on the plate, I mean, um, form different patterns. Or if you saw <laughs> the flames, I know you did some crazy stuff. If you saw the flames, um, they kind of made an up and down shape. Um, all sound. The sound of my voice, the sound of cars, all sound comes in waves, and waves or vibrations in the air um, is is what we hear. That's that's and, and it's very important. It's kind of like um, you know the, these things make up a lot of different. Um, they, they really form the fundamental basis for a lot of science. Uh, you don't really think about it. We just think about sound as like music or voices or things like that. Um, so yeah, so these sound comes in waves, right? All visual patterns are waves. And we're going to look at why, why do I care about this? Why am I sharing this with you? As an introduction, because we are going to study waves. We're going to study the equations and the functions that mathematically model and define these uh, these waves, these vibrations that you see in this unit. So something, just something to think about. Um, okay, so introduction to the unit circle. The unit circle, uh, if you if you think of, see the title here, is fundamental. It is the fundamental basis for how trigonometry works. So what is the unit circle? Well, it's called the unit circle because it has a radius of one. So it's this circle centered at the origin where every point around it is exactly one unit, distance one away from the center. Um, how well do you remember trigonometry from geometry class last year? Feel free to tell me. Um, I haven't taken geometry, so... But I, I don't know a long time I'm going to skip this, but t tell me what you think. Um, you know, pretty well, completely, what do you think? Now, this is an important note. Um, for this activity, you will not be using a calculator. If you'll notice, there's no calculator button up here. And the reason for that is because what we're going to do, what we're going to learn, you don't need a calculator for. And in fact, I think a lot of the um, Pre-calc teachers next year will not give you calculators on a lot of their tests, on a lot of their assessments, because you're going to be expected to know certain, have memorized certain details. Um, so you don't need a calculator for this. 
Okay, the point P is shown on a unit circle. So there's the point P right there. Uh, looking at the diagram, the coordinates of P are closest to which of these options? Uh, feel free to take a guess. I'm going to, I mean, not a guess. This is pretty, should be pretty easy, right? X is on the negative side here. It's a little bit less than negative 0.5. So probably negative 0 0.4. And the Y value is close to 1, 0 0.9. We're going to look at points on the unit circle. Um, angles, so we're going to talk about angles. Angles are measured counterclockwise from 1, 0. So here is, make a little note here, this point right here, right? This point is going to be the starting point for all of our angles that we're going to make. Um, and this is, I can draw on here, 1, comma, 0. Right? And we're always going to go, it's, this is so hard for me to do a little bit here. From here, draw a line here, we're going to go counterclockwise. So we're going to go this way to measure all of our angles. This is just kind of like a standard um, notation, a standard format. Think about, uh, think about it like if you were lost in the woods and you had a compass, um, the compass is helpful because it shows you where north is and you can measure everything compared to the north, right? This is our north, and everything, all the angles that we measure, we're going to measure from this, from this uh, starting point. And we're going to go counterclockwise, which means we're going to go in um, the. Oh, don't want that. I kind of want to just draw on here. Um, draw a few notes here. We're going to go counterclockwise, which means we're going in this direction. Okay, so based on that, what might this angle measure be here? This angle from here to here. Um, take a guess. What do you think? Well, let's see. Okay, so it's definitely less than 90 degrees, right? Um, it's less than 90. I don't know what the degrees symbol is so let me i'll just write 90 degrees right now. it's left than 90 degrees so maybe i don't know what do you think 80 70 i'm gonna guess say maybe 70 degrees if you think 90 degree remember 90 degrees is a right angle um not really sure and that's okay. We're just kind of playing around. Um, oh, actually, I wanted to make a note. So remember, I'm glad this thing, this saved here. So if we're kind of going around the circle, right, we've got different quadrants. Um, there's quadrant one, which is from zero to, I can kind of label these now, 90 degrees, right? Quadrant two, and we're going to go counterclockwise around quadrant one. Quadrant two goes from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, right? Um, quadrant three goes from 180 to 270, 270 degrees. Um, and quadrant four down here is going from 270 back up to 360 degrees. So those are our four quadrants um, as we go around the unit circle. We're going to talk about angles and then we're going to talk about um, well, mo mostly angles but also some coordinates on the circle today. Okay, so based on that, can you guess where these angles fall? Which quadrant do they fall in? Um, actually, I'm going to pause it, and why don't you go ahead and try that?
Okay, so um, let's come back. Uh, hopefully, you were able to answer these, this uh, this question: which of, which quadrant do these angles fall in? You know, thirty degrees falls in quadrant one. And if you click on this, it's kind of nice because it shows you. Uh, let's see, seventy degrees quadrant one, right? Quadrant two, one hundred ninety degrees. So it's past one eighty, right? That's quadrant three now. Uh, two hundred thirty looks like quadrant three. 310, now we're past this mark here, so we're at quadrant four. And then the only tricky part to this is 380 degrees. That, what does that mean? It's quadrant one again. It means that we're going around the circle a full 360, and then an extra, I guess, 20 degrees, right? So we're back in quadrant one. And another trick, an interesting one is negative 60. Negative 60 degrees means we're actually going Instead of counterclockwise, we're actually, because it's negative, we're going clockwise. We're going back down this way by 60 degrees, and that puts us in quadrant four. Um, okay, just, you know, have some, some practice time here. Try pairing up the angle measures here. They're all in degrees with the pictures. Um, I'm not going to do this for you. I, I think you can do this on your own. So I'm going to say pause the video now and then go ahead and do that and I'm going to skip on to the next section. Okay, so hopefully you did that. I'm going to skip it. I want you to try it on your own. Um, what about this question? Which quadrant do you think 560 degrees will be in? Uh, that's a good question. Remember, so remember if it's more than 360, that means it's going around a full rotation, full rotation around, and then where does it fall after that? I think you guys can figure this one out too. Um, and once you check, it should tell you. So go ahead and do that. Let's see. How would you do this, by the way? 560, that means 360, and then another 200. So another 200 degrees is past 180. I think that should be quadrant three. If you hit show angle, this is kind of fancy art, some of this stuff. Uh, it shows you it's going a full rotation around and then ending up back here. So yeah. Okay, for each of the four quadrants, remember quadrant one, two, three, four, give an example of an angle that is in that quadrant. Um, I think you can just configure this out. Uh, why don't you try this part on your own too and hit the check button and it should animate for you. So for example, if I wanted an angle in quadrant one, I could say, I don't know, 50 degrees. Check it, and it should draw that for me. Nice. Um, go ahead and do this part on your own, too. I'm going to move ahead. Okay, so we have something uh, of a new definition here from what we're going to extend what you learned in geometry. So in geometry last year, you might have remembered this abbreviation Sokotoa, right? Um, what does Sokotoa mean? It means sine, sine of an angle in a right triangle is opposite over hypotenuse, right? The opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle, the ka part, the cosine of this of the ending angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent, which are the three function three trigonometry terms, is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, when we draw an angle on the unit circle, say like 55 degrees here, we can define, we can redefine the cosine as the x coordinate of that angle, the point on the unit circle, um, the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle, so right here. Um, and the sine as the y-coordinate. How is this possible? How, how can we redefine these things as coordinates on the unit circle? How does this make sense? Oh, let me walk you through this a little bit. Uh, maybe maybe try it on your own first. 
pause the video if you want. I'm just going to kind of like dive into it. So let's say sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So here's the sine of this angle is this opposite side over the hypotenuse. Well, remember, we're on the unit circle, so this hypotenuse here is equal to 1 because it's a radius of the circle. So the opposite side over the hypotenuse is just the opposite side divided by 1, or just the opposite side, which means that this side is actually the sine of the angle. And same thing with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 1, right? That's why 1 looks weird. Um, but anything divided by 1 is itself. So the cosine of the angle is just this adjacent side. In other words, if we're looking, here's the same triangle here. The cosine is how far to the right I'm going, or the x-coordinate which means this right here is the cosine of the angle, the x-coordinate. And how far up are we going? That's the opposite side, that's the sine of the angle. So this is actually the sine of the angle. So we can define these cosine and sine as coordinates on the unit circle for any angle. Um, so I could say maybe because the hypotenuse is the radius of the circle and is 1, is equal to 1, the cosine of the angle. the x and the sine is the y it's because we're on this unit circle the hypotenuse is one so we can just say the sine is the opposite side cosine is the adjacent side so this is a new definition this is a little bit different than how we kind of, you probably learned it in geometry. Um, based on this new definition, can we find the cosine of 60 degrees? Here's the 60 degree angle. Remember, we're starting from here and this is 60 degrees up this way. Um, and we have a point on the unit circle. We have the coordinates for that point. Um, so what are, is the cosine without a calculator of 60 degrees? Well, if you remember, the cosine is the x-coordinate, so the cosine here is 0 0.5, and the sine is the y-coordinate, 0 0.87. Um, here are two more angles on the unit circle. Uh, there's a positive 110 degrees and a negative 25 degrees, and, they, we, and I've, we're given the points where those angles touch the unit circle where they are. Um, why don't you fill in this table? What is the sine of 110 degrees, the cosine of 110, and same thing for the negative angle? Go ahead and try it on your own. Um, how about this one? Give an example of an angle which has a cosine value between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. Now you might be thinking like, well, how am I going to do that, right? But remember, the cosine is just the x-coordinate. So if we're looking for an angle with an x-coordinate between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, well, that means it's going to be somewhere around here, so maybe, I don't know, maybe our 70 degree angle would work. You can check it. Try something out. Uh, the 
x coordinate is 0 0.34, so that is between 0 0.3. So the cosine of 70 degrees is 0 0.34, and that would work. Um, why don't you try this? Give an example of an angle with a negative cosine value and a sine value that's between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. Go ahead and try that on your own. What does that mean, have a negative cosine value and a positive sine value? Go ahead. Okay, so remember, negative cosine means it's got a negative x value, so it's over on this side, either quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. And a positive sign means it's got a positive y value, um, so it means it's in here in quadrant 2. Um, so let's see, a sign between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. So it's going to be somewhere up here. Uh, what, what kind of angle would that be? Well, probably something bigger than 90 degrees, maybe... I don't know, 100 or 110 degrees, right? Let's check it out. Okay, so that's definitely in quadrant two with a negative cosine value, negative x, and a positive sign. Uh, they wanted something between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. So maybe this is a little bit bigger than that. Maybe I'll go 120 degrees. Yeah, perfect, that works. This has a cosine of negative 0 0.5 and a sine of 0 0.87. Okay, here's another matching uh, practice. Why don't you go ahead and try it on your own? Try to match up each angle with a description of its sine and cosine. Just remember, sine is the y, cosine is the x. I think I might pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you've done this. I'm not going to do it for you. I want you to try it on your own. Uh, the angle 70 degrees is shown on the unit circle, so 70 degrees, right? Uh, state another angle that has the same sine value, but a different cosine value. So another angle has the same sine and a different cosine. Well, using our unit circle, right, as our frame here, before, we might not have been able to do this. But how can you name another angle that has the same sign, right? But now we know sine is the y coordinate, and cosine is the x. So we want an angle with the same y coordinate on the unit circle, but a different x coordinate. So that would be kind of our reflection over here, right? We want this angle that's kind of the same exact angle as 70 degrees, but over here in quadrant 2. Well, how could we do that? Let's see. We want it to be 70 degrees from this side, right? Or the, if this whole thing is 180, I'm guessing 180 minus 70 is 110. Let's see if that gets us there. There you go. 110 degrees has the same exact y coordinate but a negative version of the x-coordinate. So a negative of the sine, I mean of the cosine, but the same sine. Hopefully that makes sense to you, um, what I kind of did there. Here's another angle. Um, oh, 70 degrees again. State another angle that has the same cosine value, but a different sine value. Uh, that's a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to leave it up to you to try to figure that out. And I think this will be the breaking the stopping point for the first part of this video. And then in, in the next video, I will start with um, the next part of the lesson.